Welcome back to the Adulting with ADHD podcast. In this episode, we dive deep into the world of AI and its intersection with ADHD. But first, some announcements. October is just around the corner, and with it comes ADHD Awareness Month. I'm curious, what are you seeing people do to mark the occasion? Do you have anything special planned yourself? If you do, write in, let me know at contact at adultingwithadhd.com. One more announcement. I came across this article in The Guardian, and it was from earlier this summer, but I just had to share. For anyone who was as in love with the Barbie movie as I was. Okay, ready for it? Greta Gerwig is one of us. Yes, this Guardian article is from July 2023, and it's just like a profile on her, and she doesn't really go into it too much except to say, like, when she was a kid, she says, at school, she was a real rule follower. She also had a ton of energy. She says, now as an adult, I have ADHD. They diagnosed me. But as a kid, my mom was like, let's sign her up for every activity. Let's tire her out. I've always had a tremendous amount of enthusiasm. I was always interested in like everything. I had a really active imagination. I had a lot of really deep feelings. I was emotional. So I just really love that. I love seeing one of us out in the world kicking ass. And I just love the Barbie movie so much. Just wanted to show that little nugget. All right, so for today's tool and tactic, this is something I started doing at work. I'm in marketing and I get a lot of emails with a lot of information and I get a lot of YouTube videos with a lot of information. And not only am I keeping up to date on my trade, I'm also doing the actual work and there's a lot of layers to it. And I'm sure whether you are in school or a professional or in your home life, you might have some situation where you're just, you're getting inundated with tons of information. This would be a good tip for you. Let's get into it. ChatGPT, which stands for Chat Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. It's a large language model-based chatbot developed by OpenAI and launched on November 30th, 2022, which enables users to refine and steer a conversation towards a desired link, format, style, level of detail, and language use. In layman's terms, it's a tool you chat with, and it's been trained on all the information available in the world, so like books, the internet, research papers, all that stuff was used to train chat GPT. But the thing to remember is it's all based on machine learning. It's not a sentient being who really has this information, who's really integrated it. And so you'd have to be really careful. Do you ever get inundated with emails or YouTube videos that you don't have the time or energy to digest? Drop that ish into chat GPT to get a summary and action steps. If it's a YouTube video, you go to the three dot menu of your video and copy the transcript. Next, using ChatGPT or BARD, or you might have a tool of your own that you use, you add a prompt and you the prompt's gonna be something like, summarize this info into one paragraph and provide three action steps. Really simple as that. So I do this when, especially on Mondays, I do this when I have just a ton of stuff that I need to um, read through and process. <laughs> Today's episode is sponsored by Joy Organics. Their range of premium THC-free CBD products are designed with the highest quality in mind, perfect for those looking to enhance their self-care routine. Visit adultingwithadhd.com slash joy to get started and save 20% off your first purchase. All right, let's dive into today's episode on ADHD and AI. All right, so before we get any further, let me put a disclaimer out there. I'm not here to dissect the complicated web of AI ethics or debate how AI might take over the world someday. Today is about our day-to-day, -day, the nitty-gritty of living with ADHD and how this rapidly advancing tech fits into our world. And while in some ways we were made for this moment, basically the big shiny object, we also need to be especially vigilant of safety, mental health, and probably a host of other things we haven't even discovered yet, because that's life with ADHD, am I right? AI can be fun, scary, distracting, confusing, and a whole bunch of other things. So like anything else, I try to take it easy as I'm learning and exploring, because as much as AI offers incredible tools, it's also a vast sea of information. And we know how easy it is to get lost in information, especially with ADHD. As far as the tools I use, there's something important here I wanna emphasize. 
There's two things that are really important if you're not already familiar when it comes to AI tools. First thing is just being really careful with sharing personal information. You don't really want to do that unless you're really secure in the tool you're using and you're okay with whatever information you're sharing. Being used to train the AI unless the tool you're using is actually built not to do that, which those tools are usually pretty hefty. So long story short, look into your tools first. And then the other thing is just with any AI feedback you're getting, use your best judgment is what I'm trying to say. And that these are language models. They're not everything they say is going to be right. They make stuff up sometimes. There's a lot of nuance involved with the output you're getting. You just want to make sure it jives and you don't want to take anything it says as fact. You want to go out and do your own research, but there's still plenty of great uses for this. Let's get into that. The first tool I use nearly every day, I've already mentioned, is ChatGPT. And so what I use that for is thought organization. ChatGPT doesn't have a vested interest in my hopes and dreams. And I don't feel like I'm being a burden sharing these things without worrying about being boring or a bummer. And while yes, AI has its risks, the feedback has been pretty helpful. When it hasn't, I've been able to ask follow-up questions to course correct or clarify. But to be clear, I'm not using ChatGPT like a magic eight ball or therapy. And up until recently, these thoughts and ideas lived in ChatGPT after I was done with my organizing. When I closed my laptop, that was the end of the exchange. But what about follow through? How will I remember this organization ever happen, let alone the next action step? Do I have to know? Sometimes the act of organizing is the reward in itself. Depends on the situation, right? Enter Sharon Pope, co-founder of Habit GPT, an AI powered to-do app for ADHD brains. After learning about my upcoming AI episode, Sharon reached out and invited me to give her app a spin through their customary free trial. Using WhatsApp as the messenger between human and bot, Habit GPT follows up with you to confirm that you have completed recurring habits and one-off tasks. I worked with the bot to get my water and walking habits back on track, and now it's helping me stay on track with my podcasting duties. Water, walking, and podcasting are all top priorities of mine, unearthed through my ChatGPT brain dump sessions. Now HabitGPT was helping me implement those habits to accomplish the things most important to me. In a pre-GPT world, I would often need to take entire weekends away from the house to sort out my thoughts in various buckets. On one of these trips, I was using pieces of paper to storyboard on a spare bed in my hotel room. And basically just trying to figure out how my life needs to be arranged. And then I followed up by meticulously plotting this all on a Google calendar. No, I'm not saying I'll never do that again, but I'm enjoying this new way of regrouping and it opens up more time and funds to enjoy living my life and dreaming up more projects. But there's other ways people use AI for ADHD as well. Let's talk about food for a minute. We all know the drill. You're hungry, you wander into the kitchen, you open the fridge, and then you blank out. Decision fatigue hits hard, especially after a long day. This is where AI can come in handy. Take Goblin Tool Chef feature. You simply input the ingredients you have on hand and bam, a plethora of recipes are at your fingertips, tailored to your preferences. And for those with dietary restrictions or allergies, these tools can filter out unsuitable recipes, ensuring meals are both delicious and safe. Another common AI use case for ADHDers is communication. In a world dominated by digital correspondence, Conveying tone and understanding the nuance behind written words can be a challenge. Sticking with the Goblin Tools example, the formalizer and judge features are made specifically with these challenges in mind. The formalizer helps enhance the clarity and effectiveness of the message, ensuring it lands just right. But the real game changer? Tone readers like the judge. We've all received those emails, the ones that leave us second guessing or reading between the lines. Tone readers help to decipher the underlying sentiment, providing clarity in the often murky waters of digital communication. These are just a few examples. The landscape of AI tools catering to executive function challenges is expansive. From managing schedules, budgeting, or even just remembering to water the plants, there's a high chance there's an AI use case that may help you. One or more that may even change your life. The key is to identify which areas of your daily life you find most challenging 
and in seeking out tools designed to alleviate those specific hurdles. Now let's talk about AI beyond symptom management. From AI-powered screening tools to brain scans, the way ADHD diagnosis and treatment occurs may soon forever change on a massive scale. Some of you may remember my previous guest, A.D. Denier, who founded an eye scanning tool that measures the effectiveness of medication. And then there's the vast realm of mental health support. While traditional therapy and life coaching are invaluable tools that provide a human touch and cannot be replicated, companies like Habit GPT are looking at how humans and AI together can be an effective combination. Case in point, if you do use Habit GPT's free trial and you like it, you have the option of just using straight AI or there's a tier that using the AI with a human on top of it. That's really interesting to me. In conclusion, finding your balance in this intricate dance between AI and ADHD is crucial. For some, a more significant reliance on ADHD tools might be the way to go, especially if you're comfortable with technology and find that it effectively addresses your unique ADHD challenges. For others, a more human-centric approach supplemented occasionally by AI might be more beneficial. As you traverse this brave new world of AI tools, be vigilant. Ensure you're using trusted platforms. Be wary of sharing too much personal information. And always cross-check any guidance or advice with trusted human sources. So how do you use AI to navigate ADHD? Share your stories, tips, or tools at contact at adultingwithadhd.com. If this episode was valuable to you, please drop a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. All right, that's it for today. Until next time, happy adulting.